it's a great pleasure that uh, Zah is here tonight. Um, I somehow sense that this is a very uh, special moment. I'm really uh, looking forward to this uh, lecture. As you know, Zah has been a fantastic supporter of the school and very much a regular. But I think this year is, is somehow a very special year. Last week, there was the opening of a fantastic exhibition at the MAC in Vienna. And uh, the thing that was interesting about this exhibition is that it really went back very much to almost the kind of student days of uh, Zaha's work until the very recent period. Um, and it's incredible, really, to see the range of projects, the density that these projects now make together as a kind of body of work, and the, the, the enormous and fantastic consistency of this, of this work over the, the years. Someone who really from the very, very beginning had uh, something uh, extraordinary and, uh, and special in their work. And I think the fact uh, that, uh, or, th or the thing that in a sense makes also this particular period uh, somehow quite special is that the fruits of all those years, the incredible labor, in a sense is now also coming together in, a, in an incredibly significant body of work. Uh, which uh, is going to be uh, available for uh, most of us to, uh, to visit because previously the projects have been in, uh, in uh, different locations. Now I think the density is also building up in, in locations that are closer to each other. So Cincinnati will open later on this month, at the end of the month, and uh, the, uh, the project of the, of the of the ski slope, the ski jump that opened last year. There is Rome, there is Wolfsburg. Uh, the list, I think, is, uh, is kind of building up, and I think that this is a fantastic thing. Uh, Cincinnati is certainly going to be a very important project, and I think we're going to be probably the, the sort of the first audience that will see some of the finished, more completed version of the project. Saha is going to be assisted by Patrick Schumacher, here, who has also been, I think, an important <coughs> collaborator um, among many of collaborators uh, of, of Zaha's over the last few years. So without uh, further delay, please welcome Zaha Hadi. Um, Morrison, thank you, and it's always very nice to be here. I promise you I will not tease you today. Um, I'm sure I'll slip in something in the middle of this lecture. Um, but um, Morrison is obviously an old friend, and he was, as I always said, in my first year. I think this one is a bit short. You want me to wear the, that thing you had? No. Microphones and women don't work very well together. Uh, for some, some amazing reason. Um, um, and it was very nice having you there uh, last week, Martin. It, was, uh, it reminded me actually of my show at the AA 20 years ago, when I, uh, after I just won the peak, it was uh, also a very important moment when we occupied the entire school. And uh, at the time, uh, I know many of you here know David Petras, but David Petras used to be a very difficult with all the students. And, uh, and we wanted to mess around with every room in the school, and they were all like, you know, really worried because Alvin did not want this to happen, the chairman then. But Alvin luckily went away on, on a trip to America, and of course I had a field day. Um, you know, everything was, uh, was uh, altered, and it was, uh, I think it was an interesting moment, in both in my, in my life and also in the, in the school's history. And but after that, many things were possible in terms of, um, violating spaces. Um, I, have, I, I must say, people always ask me what happened I built earlier and so on. I really, uh, and I still believe that um, a project, uh, irrespective of whether it's built or not, has uh, as much importance. Uh, therefore, I think I do believe in the theoretical project. And I think it has been my, uh, let's say, my uh, ambition and struggle for the past 20 years to achieve the theoretical project. and. Um, and so I think it is. These achievements are always incremental. I can't say everything has been done at the same time, but um, 
Uh, in the last four years, uh, we have done so many competitions. This is our only resource for building work is that to do competitions because we, nobody gives us a commission. Um, and, uh, and, and therefore, we have to keep on doing them. And we had won some, we had lost many, but uh, the build up of the recent commissions which we won or projects is building up now. And, if, and I will show some of these at the beginning of the lecture. The lecture is, is let's say, uh, organized in three, uh, three sections. The first is built work, second section is uh, uh, installations and exhibitions, and then uh, all the current projects, which are, some of them will be on site or on site or will be on site soon. Uh, Patrick, my apologies to you. I know you're not uh, supposed to be sitting there doing this, but um, me and machines are not really best of friends either. It's like the microphones. Can I have the first slide? Uh, second slide. Um, Cincinnati, which was, um, in a way, it's taken a long time. It's um, uh, this project was done about five, and a, five years ago, and I think from the, and in a way, maybe the central, the central elements of this work has kind of remained, some, thing, some things kind of have disappeared. Uh, this was a, many people thought, assumed that it would be a red building, in the same way that people thought that Vita would be a red building, I don't know why red, is, uh, you know, I don't use red too much, but anyway, assume that Vita, and so even the client at Vita when the building was done, he was shocked, it was, colorless, uh, and in a way similar to Cincinnati. So the original ideas was about uh, kind of spaces which are, you know, which are aggregating or uh, nesting into each other, uh, fundamentally because there were, uh, this is a boring museum, this is not a collection, so they rely on tremendous amount of kind of flexible space and different spaces. Next please. Um, drawing done by uh, Jane, who is uh, working at the office at the time with the catalog, of many of the rooms, which we did not really know at the time what rooms which would be uh, possible. Uh, and, um, and so this, one of the ideas which actually remained was the urban carpet. Next, please. May I quite just move on? Uh, these are, there were endless studies done based on this idea of the, or different ideas, of one which is the aggregate, one which is the urban carpet, where all the staircases or ramps are uh, kind of uh, displaced against it. Next. Some, again, some very early models showing this idea of movement from the top of the building all the way down to the street. And the idea was to kind of really keep the ground, like in many of our product, the ground as a sub subic domain. Uh, Cincinnati, in, in America, there isn't uh, kind of really, these are not buildings owned by the state. These are more or less private institutions. In this case, the city um, wanting to regenerate the downtown therefore give uh, the site to the center and some money to, towards its building, fundamentally because to, they were to regenerate and not by uh, installing public institutions and no longer about retail and, and commercial activity. Next, please. So the idea that the top of the building is obviously in this case having these kind of very large uh, galleries which nest into each other, implying they could one, one, one domain could nest into another. And the way it was translated that like, for example, the, office, uh, the offices uh, which are on the street would be nesting into one of the galleries, the ground remaining a public, uh, public kind of room, and the idea that you don't move, really don't pay till you get to where the ramps are next. Studies of uh, how the terracing could occur on the different floors. Next. Uh, there's a kind of a ravine between uh, the urban uh, carpet and the main galleries with all the staircases, next. Um, models showing how these, some, some space could actually jut into another, uh, like a kind of horizontal and vertical galleries, next. There's nothing over there. An animation, but it's not working. Or what is? Okay, next one. Then. Next. So these are before it was completed. Uh, they're still doing the ground, showing the kind of the cut of the urban carpet, the 
aggregates on the edge of the corner. It was not really possible to build this building in America in, in, uh, in situ concrete, so the, the urban carpet is in the situ concrete. This is all uh, uh, prefab concrete uh, pieces. Uh, one steel element. Next. Next. The cantilevers on the street. The, what is interesting about the grid at this point is that the, at, uh, the grid juts out very gently at that particular corner, so that at that particular edge, the grid doesn't align. Next. Uh, the urban carpet uh, coming from the top floor. Uh, there are two kind of special spaces which are connected by this, uh, um, these uh, very large uh, ram staircases, which is the, uh, the lobby on the ground, and the top floor is uh, the art museum where they could commission art, and uh, it's for educational purposes which could be used. Next. Photos done by Hélène Binet. I'm not sure she's, I think she's there again, or is going again. <coughs> Next. Next. Uh, Nanis Garanshaw, I will go through this very quickly. Nanis Garanshaw, which is a building we did uh, four years ago, three years ago, uh, which is about kind of uh, bundles, which is bonding of uh, three different spaces. And as you, uh, and it stretches, and this is a, in a kind of a exhibition for a kind of a flower show. And the idea that you kind of create a path and also you create a, um, uh, a space for exhibition. Next. So it starts at zero and it lifts up like a kind of combination of infrastructure uh, to building and also allows you to kind of move through the site uh, without, uh, without going into the building. Next. So it was really about these three parallel spaces uh, which uh, increase in uh, height and in width. Next. Two very large objects in the, this very linear space. Uh, this, the ramp which connects the entrance says, and the staircase. Next. And how the use of material, how the material really meets, uh, meets the ground. Um, also, the lighting was in, and these perks in vial were very important. You are comfortable? Uh, and it was, it, it was interesting, and, and the whole idea of kind of really using complexity in kind of terms of geometry or a different kind of service. There was, in the night of the opening, uh, this, these are both vitra and this are in a kind of dark field because the factory obviously shuts off at night, so there is nothing. Uh, around the building, but in, thi in this case also there was nothing around it. And as we went by it at uh, very late at night, there was one spot where the light uh, kind of caught the light off uh, kind of light pollution and was the curvature of the building. And I think it, it becomes, it became very clear to me then that these, uh, these things not only uh, uh, have a kind of in terms of a spatial arrangement and repertoire have a kind of really importance, but also that, that these uh, tests we did through painting uh, which I never thought that would really one can be achieved through, I thought eventually they could be through the building, were achieved come through, through uh, maybe sometimes this, this kind of ideas of light and, and also transparency and opacity and, uh, and eventually through kind of also openness and porosity. Next thing. Um, the dome platform, next. The three ribbons, which uh, the mine zone, next. Uh, this project kind of opened about, uh, finished about two years ago and officially last year. Uh, the um, car park in uh, Strasbourg. Um, when we were first asked to do this, uh, it was a, as a kind of really uh, more like an installation. It was a program for artists to contribute to infrastructural projects. And uh, it was on three sites, and uh, we uh, basically kind of a surface uh, car park, and eventually they wanted a station next. So we combined the two uh, separate uh, sites, uh, asked them to change the line of the uh, uh, the tram. Uh, this is a surface tram, which is very uh, one literally step off the ground, uh, and. Uh, 
there are many examples of how this could be uh, uh, tilted. Uh, and they basically get two uh, fields, the field of the, uh, of the roof and the field of the car park. Next, please. To uh, also the lighting is like you know, the lines of the, of the tarmac. Two materials or three materials, uh, two colors, black and white and sometimes gray. Two materials, tarmac and concrete. Uh, uh, so in black and white, next. So they can have the fold in the, in the roof. Two systems of columns, the tram, next. Uh, and in the day, it's very difficult to tell between shadow and, uh, and the lighting on the floor. Diving boards are for seating. Next. And the field uh, has kind of two distortions, one which is the kind of lift off the ground and the other the distortion through geometry of these uh, uh, kind of field of lines, the lighting, also consistent with the kind of the story of the black and white. Next. So sometimes in the day, some things are more op uh, obvious and in the night, the, the field disappears and only the light remains. Next, please. Uh, the ski jump, uh, which I showed uh, here, I don't know, was it two months ago, three months ago, a rather strange conference called um, Something in Sport. Sorry, Moisen. It's time for the teas. Um, uh, this, uh, this competition was, uh, there was another competition which was for, the, for this uh, stand, was maybe 12 years ago. Anyway, this is the old ski jump and the idea that the, the, the intention was the incline of the jump had, uh, this ramp had changed and therefore they needed another another one, but also that through adding a program um, on the top, kind of one urbanizes, let's say, the ski jump. The city, as you can see, is very on the edge of the, on the, of the jump. And uh, from the photograph, it seems that it's as if it's remote and far away, but actually it's very adjacent to the city. It's like a tower in the city. Next. So this is the, uh, the line of the, which it would have changed, and therefore, to combine the fluidity of the line of the jump with the, with the space above in one single move. Next. Uh, originally there were columns here, the structure changed to a kind of uh, a girder <coughs> which uh, limited all the columns. Next. Under construction. The main structure is in concrete, the rest is all in steel. Next. The space with that before it was glazed uh, overlooking the mountains and the city. Next. And just showing it also before completion of, of the of the girder, the way the the jump. Uh, they they go down here and they leap gently on a very thin platform and then they jump off. I suppose you don't have the, the animation Patrick. No. And this is lecture given be by me and Patrick because uh, there's censorship here. If, and if you know Patrick, you know what I mean. Uh, we once, um, Patrick would be upset with me because I don't, he doesn't like me teasing him. Uh, but there was a, <laughs> uh, he is, despite all that, a very important member of the office. But um, there was a presentation uh, years ago with a Japanese client and we had spent all night drawing these things, uh, the drawing days. And we came for this presentation, we, me and at the time, Bill Goodwin were trying to tell the client, this is that, and we put our finger down on the paper and there was nothing. And Patrick, when he sent us home, he said, oh, don't worry, I'll take care of everything, you go and sleep for, for an hour. We went to have a shower and come back and he had rubbed it all off. It had gone. <coughs> everything we had designed the night before had disappeared. <coughs> he decided to change it in the last minute and so, uh, but I have to say, not this product necessarily, but um, um, Patrick had been a really a, a, a very important member, and I'm also very glad to see others here who have been in the office and have all contributed to this work. Uh, next, please. Next. So this is views of the uh, the shaft, which is the elevator, the main structure, the elevator, the platform. They did the first jump. We had only one year to turn over the side, so from the time of uh, demolition to the moment of jumping was only one year because there had to be 
they had to jump on the 4th of January and they had, we had one year to do it. So they jumped uh, a year and a half ago before it was completed. Next. Uh, this is the view from the, the top. Now I tell this joke all the time, but it's absolutely unbelievable when you stand up there. This is the largest cemetery in Innsbruck. And so, <laughs> and so no wonder they do it well. And of course it was the first time it was possible for visitors to actually watch them from the room above as they, as they jumped off. Th it is also interesting an issue of scale because one always sees these guys jumping against blue sky or a sky. Uh, you never realize their scale and they are very light and understandably so, you know. So we, uh, we were all caught in one of the elevators with uh, 50 of them. And, um, and because they were small, they fit in that elevator. Um, so uh, anyway, it, it was interesting to see them do this. And it, they, they were all professionals, so that was, it seemed very easy, but obviously not. So they literally sit on an edge, a ledge here and go, next. And so most of these photographs show it against the mountains, but actually it's very, it's, it's uh, grown, it grows out of the city. Uh, the main structure, the fluid line, which kind of becomes wraps around the edge of the building and this is where uh, observation platform and very small restaurant next that's the ledge which they the space which they sit on next next they just kind of views and details the underside next And they have a lighting kind of sy system where it you know, changes light at night or whatever. Next, please. The cemetery. And the views are quite amazing, actually, from the, from the top. And so I think that, uh, and, and you can see it, it really comes out of this kind of, this context. So it's not, it's not about a building remote uh, outside Innsbruck. Next, please. <coughs> uh, in the last, <coughs> Three years <coughs> or four years, we've done a lot of competitions, M and then many of them <coughs> museums. This is a royal collection in Madrid, where the entire product was buried below ground, and therefore this, uh, like there's a tongue which pulls you in uh, into the kind of the underworld, and this edge can look out into another park, and this is a collection for uh, tapestries and carriages. Next. So this is kind of like a cavernous space pulling you into uh, the space underneath, and but there is views uh, out at a particular moment. So the ramps are for all the carriages and the walls are only for the tapestries. Next. Uh, the, Ro the Royal Sophia, also in Madrid, uh, the idea that each, the Royal Sophia was a basically a very large hospital. And the idea to give a tremendous variety of uh, uh, spaces for uh, different um, different galleries, offices, libraries, and stuff like that. <coughs> Each put over each other independent, like a landscape, but all separated. Next, uh, the museum in Graz, which is a kind of a tectonic uh, landscape piece, where also all the galleries are uh, using this kind of different ideas of topography, including like the amphitheaters and and then the ground is all open next. So the whole of the ground is uh, uh, is open, the entire gallery is lifted up next. Uh, Quebec Library, which is about these uh, very large, let's say valleys or uh, reading rooms. <coughs> the idea that um, that you move through these crevices to go up to these very large reading rooms. Again, it liberates the ground. Next. <coughs> the diagram in terms of organization also becomes the diagram of circulation, the structure. <coughs> so this is uh, the kind of these very large uh, ravines in between the, the valleys 
become a source of light from above and also when you move underneath you are kind of pulled towards these very large reading rooms. Next please. Uh, we did two compositions for BMW two years ago, uh, one which was for the delivery center. which is a very large hill, adjacent to the existing headquarters for BMW in Munich. And the idea that from this you can, and it's very close to the uh, Friotto Stadium, so the idea to kind of make another uh, kind of a hill or mountain. And within the hill, there are two other small hills with a space in between which becomes the exhibition space for the delivery center. Next please. And the idea that all these delivery centers for uh, manufacturing uh, industries, like uh, in cars, is like you, you come in and you kind of wed, you wed your car, uh, so you can look at them and then you can, you know, they're assembled and you can take them or dry them off, or you can, in this case, move into the building and uh, see it as a visitor. Next. Next. <coughs> Uh, the mosque in Strasbourg, next, which is about a kind of a cavernous against space with kind of these uh, ribs, and it gives you very different kind of really spaces, and becomes another kind of form of landscape. Next, um, so this idea of kind of topography um, eventually married a structure and uh, uh, what you call a smart skin. Uh, this is a Guggenheim in, uh, in Tokyo which is like a kind of firecracker which is being pulled, uh, distorted both ends, and then cut to allow light to come from the each edge. It's one very large space. Uh, there is no really uh, other organization on the interior. Next. Next. The smart skin allows you kind of to have different materials <coughs> in terms of uh, um, solar panels or uh, enamel panels or glazing or projections. There is like a large table which sits inside which becomes the, um, all the offices and also a viewing platform of the main exhibition. The Guggenheim at the time had this uh, program of doing large museum but also doing uh, uh, temporary uh, installations uh, for 10 years of very large exhibitions and they wanted a big enough space to have as many exhibitions as possible or flexibility of an exhibition feasible. <coughs> um, the Craft Museum in New York, like a Darrell Stone building, which was a l very small kind of flow plate to do the uh, Craft Museum, which is uh, now, I think, on fourth or straight of them. Next. So the idea to kind of really uh, uh, exaggerate the dot uh, matrix on the on the exterior, uh, and maybe in this case, the extension could become by kind of like almost impregnating the building, because it looks through also graphic distortion, uh, you can, d can see kind of, and uh, uh, not uh, unveil the, the kind of growth of the building. Next. And this can actually become in forms of kind of really patterning, whether it's uh, it's uh, you know material or opening. Next, next, with cutting out with views out into Columbus Circle. And what is also nice about this building was that it has four sides, unusual for New York, for a building that could be freestanding and with views on all sides. And the idea that you leave the floor plate more or less as it is and just maybe grow in one scale, but to have windows on all directions. Next please. Another product which is also kind of a vertical, uh, uh, let's say more kind of extrusion of a kind of citron and sonizé. Next. And the idea whether it's a showroom and an exhibition space. Next. Can you go through this? So the, to use the, this, uh, Citroen sign as a way of also organizing the uh, uh, the glazing or the mat kind of material interpretation. Again, on one side in terms of circulation 
and uh, storage is uh, behind the white wall, and the rest is all for showing the cars. Next. Uh, another museum in Munich for a very large collection, uh, predominantly Cy Twombly, uh, pieces where the idea, this is a very large museum which is being recently built, and this is another separate uh, museum, and the idea to kind of really allow for uh, this kind of cut through the building to allow kind of the, not only kind of an urban <coughs> condition to kind of really sim into the building, but also to create a internal room which connects it to uh, the kind of the whole urban museum quarter. Next. Spilling out for the cafe and stuff like that. And then, so this uh, ravine or the crack or whatever stays throughout the building um, and allowing galleries and bridges connecting both sides of the galleries together. Next. Next. So this shows the, this uh, internal street uh, with the bridges connecting both sides of the building with the street coming through, uh, allowing this kind of the urban space to reoccur, the kind of public domain within the building. <coughs> Thanks. Uh, we have tried to say over the last uh, many years to always uh, carve out or make uh, make it possible to kind of really reinvent uh, the side that it can take on uh, a kind of program, a kind of a civic, a civic program. Um, this is obviously very appropriate for public buildings, but also when there are other kinds of buildings which are not necessarily obvious that you can uh, carve away space, uh, we try to do that by, by kind of cutting away or uh, lifting the ground or peeling or whatever systems of organization. But it was very important that we, uh, we, can, we are able to allow this kind of degree of transparency uh, into these uh, very large programs uh, and porosity. There's uh, the railway station for uh, Florence, next. An idea that is again a study on landscape with a very large, uh, like a ravine uh, or a crevice to uh, bring in the light into the underworld. Next. We are doing another one, another conversation for, uh, uh, for Naples. <coughs> we did not get this one for um, really very stupid reasons, but we won't go into this right now and embarrass ourselves. Uh, so this is kind of views uh, above and below. Next. So seeing through the kind of the cuts in the building and how the two sides begin to connect to each other. Uh, so the, the idea is uh, almost like a kind of a, a large topography uh, resting over the, uh, the platforms. Next. Another composition for uh, a music center in Aalborg, uh, Jutland in, uh, in Denmark. And I have one single large uh, surface or project which has uh, music uh, spaces, uh, concert halls, a school of architecture, the companies which actually also rest there, and within it there was a kind of public space. Next, the bridge in Paris, which is made of many bridges, and um, they are for uh, vehicular and uh, pedestrian circulation. Next. Next please. So it shows you kind of all the different layers and how it connects the, uh, the island to the, uh, to the city. Next. Um, this is uh, the tower which we did for Alessi, 
<coughs> commissioned by Anastasiak for um, in Venice, which was a twin twin, two twins, and uh, again goes back to the idea of the of the bundles and the bundling of spaces. Next, showing the kind of the spaces which is carved out between them and through them. Next, obviously they are all takes on the on the twin towers. Uh, the William Medici intention of uh, the red uh, strings. Next. Pet Shop Boys set. And um, well I'm glad Oliver is here. I'm sure it brings back some memories. Um, the uh, Shalawa dance, which is, uh, these are kind of these uh, bridges, which are basically made the same material as the, which was made for the dome, which is a uh, resin honeycomb reinforced uh, resin. So it makes them very light and aluminum on the edges. And they can be either worn, you can go through them, or you can move them around very easily and they have very different compositions. Next. <coughs> so it becomes, it relates back to uh, the idea of the bridge in Paris where there is more than one bridge and becomes, goes back to that, going, becoming like kind of gentle hills, but they're also used for circulation. So they kind of, in this case, they can permanently uh, rotate. Next. A recent um, set for the, uh, an opera in, in Graz, where the surface uh, is one continuous surface, and then it begins to either hydraulically or manually with all the dancers uh, open it up. And the idea there are two worlds, the underworld and the, one, the world above, and they can move through these worlds. Or unveil them, or right. and the furniture which we did uh, three years ago for Sia Moroni, two sofas and two tables, and they go back to this idea of session of the last few years of this idea of land formation, topography, hills, and how this could become part of a kind of an interior environment uh, or landscape. Next. Another take on the uh, really uh, fragments of piece with basically a cube cut, and they can form together when they rest over each other, a very large hill. Next. This is the show in, uh, in Wolfsburg. Next. The installation again in Wolfsburg, where the idea of the cones for Wolfsburg, we use them kind of tumble, like tumbling cones, and the cones becomes a way of exhibiting Wolfsburg again. Next. The domestic wave in Graz, another installation, which is also in the show in Vienna, about making an uh, entire kind of really domestic environment, including a bed or TV and so on. Next. The tea set for Alessi, which is also very recent, uh, all made in silver. Uh, they have kind of two lives. They have kind of a vertical life and a horizontal life, uh, where when it's filled, it's horizontal. When it's empty, it's vertical. That's the logic of the office, of course, is that uh, against all the logics. So you hold the top and pour it for the coffee. It's, um, I have a problem with, you know, not a problem. I have a relationship with teapots, obviously. And, um, and I had... Uh, and they said, asked me for 20 years to do a teapot, and I refused. And, and I said, one day, I can only do it if I can do a strange teapot, like a thin teapot, a fat teapot. Those who know me might know what I, I'm talking about, but anyway. Um, anyway, so this was, um, so this is kind of, uh, this is another piece by Alessi, which I like while as a candlestick, so it could be used on both ends. Another piece of furniture, which is called, uh, Iceberg. Is it iceberg? It's, uh, now it's I. It's for, we forgot mountains. It's, so this is also in production. Uh, it's uh, a kind of pearlized white. It has two kind of seating, one this way and one that way. It's also on the show in Vienna. Next. Ice storm. 
the show, the installation for Vienna, which is about these very large uh, foam pieces. And the intention kind of to really to create uh, one of these environments where it could be tested on the scale of the very large gallery, which could be used. And within this, uh, this uh, storm are added to it uh, existing furniture like these, also new ones which are added at the tip. Of, so this iceberg kind of stretched and these new pieces are added to it. Next. So this is in the show. Uh, some of the old paintings and drawings, uh, the art storm pieces. These are all different furniture or seating which is designed for different manufacturers. Next. And this idea of doing it is really uh, furniture came a long time ago when I did the house in London, uh, the Tara's house. And, and also I was doing coup down and people used to always ask me how would you inhabit these uh, spaces which were no longer about uh, mass production nor about uh, you know, uh, uh, divorce from the 90 degree and how you can deal with, mm, with kind of complex organization and the idea that to make this furniture as kind of part of these installations or part of these environments. Uh, so this is, we're going to the other side, at the one of these uh, small uh, seats. Next. One of the benches. This is a bench coming out of a crevice. Next. Hans Colline. Some of uh, visitors from London. The show is in two parts. One is the central space, which is this, and there's another gallery, ga four galleries all around it, which have all the drawings. Another coffee set. The domestic wave also embedded into these uh, installations. So the idea that this installation would embed into it um, other pieces, and if we, there are other exhibitions in the future, uh, more things could be added to it. So it's not, not about one kind of permanent uh, fixed piece and or ma more furniture. <coughs> uh, the product in the <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Guadalajara for a very large hotel, 300 rooms. Um, we don't really know what's happening to it right now, but I think it, you know, it's kind of in a slight kind of uh, sleep situation. Uh, so the idea that you kind of really make a kind of pixelation or an aggregate of uh, a single uh, room or a single kind of uh, bedroom, and uh, this was done three years ago, two years ago. Uh, and the idea that some of these spaces could become ten rooms or four rooms or three rooms uh, to make a this very large landscape. There's an artificial lake here. It's a, the side is like a dip, and there's here like the edge of the dip. And the idea to kind of make another to create a landscape on this very large dish uh, with the with the hotel. So these could be either <coughs> occupied as apartments or they could occupy by uh, groups of people. Next. Museum in uh, in uh, outside Copenhagen. So this is an extension. Next, the Salerno boat terminal. Um, just finishing production drawings will be on site, I think, in, in the next few months. It's like a kind of shell structure, one single uh, movement of ramps. Next. So kind of one move to kind of the Salerno wants to compete with Naples or replace Naples for cruise liners uh, docking there. Next, the metallic uh, model showing the shell structure. Next, the opening, the interiors.
actually the, the space above uh, the dock, dock site next to it. Uh, another product which is in Barcelona for the uh, near the big theater, the two big theaters, the Meridian is a point where the Meridian uh, at this moment the Meridian drops. We have more or less two or three blocks. Of a very for a very large uh, cine complex, uh, the the idea of the surface would to be a park or a piazza uh, to deal with these two buildings, and also uh, next is so the, uh, th there's a very big difference between the surface of this and the drop on this edge uh, of the section next. <coughs> so dealing with it with landscape and also. Uh, the idea of the uh, the cinemaplex, uh, the idea that also you can you can walk from above or you can enter on the edge to the cinema, the 20 cinemas, uh, different sizes, uh, all the different uh, public lobbies connecting to the to the main streets, the theaters next door by uh, one being by Moneo and the other uh, Bofil. So the kind of topography of the ground, allowing sometimes light into the lobby spaces. <coughs> These are all the cinema. So the section drops from uh, zero here, a deck docking over uh, the whole of the railway, which is underneath, will be decked over. So this rests over the railway. The bridge in Abu Dhabi, uh, they've built all the uh, extensions, I mean, all the roadway to the point of the bridge. Next. The structure, which is uh, so enormous that we can almost use it as a space of, uh, if it wasn't for uh, maybe um, um, security purposes, but could use them for other programs. Singapore. Um, this is a an ongoing project for 20 years. Uh, the existing topography was a kind of a park, and the idea was to uh, develop a kind of a uh, technology park, uh, biomedics and technology, uh, what they call four hubs. Uh, each hub will have a kind of its own uh, public space, and also the, the intensity, the intention was kind of to move away from the idea of the point grid or kind of skyscrapers or towers to kind of really a field project where the headquarters of always building could occupy uh, different fields and these could become adjacent to each other dealing with kind of similar ideas in terms of research and therefore meeting in these kind of really uh, allocated uh, uh, civic spaces. The park is being carved out of this very large mass to remain more or less as if it's an existing park with some intervention by landscape architects. Uh, some of these areas have, are under development by different firms, uh, and the same with the part one section of it is also uh, under development. So we are doing now a second phase of the master plan. Next. So the idea that uh, these uh, to mediate the two sides of the uh, the park, uh, we call a soft grid, and the soft grid becomes the kind of really the urban field. Uh, which uh, these uh, buildings become uh, uh, dealing with uh, ideas of infrastructure, main main alleys and uh, smaller streets, uh, new circulation systems, and uh, whether it's tramways or new cars. Next, early studies of the model of these very really uh, very large uh, kind of uh, field project which converge into each other, forming this soft grid to allow for um, street movement to move between the existing, the existing infrastructure and the, uh, and the, the new one. Psychoponic. Like I can never say psychoponic, like but anyway, here we go. It's a house for a guy called Coco Brown. Uh, I thought it was a nickname, but it's not. And, uh, He's a, a kind of a Hollywood, Hollywood guy. Don't exactly what know what he does in Hollywood, but uh, anyway, he's a nice guy. Um, <laughs> and he's do, doing his project with uh, I don't know forty other architects, and um, this is uh, one of them. 
So the idea that uh, it's like a, like a wave uh, with a with a with a kind of a, a, a pool like a, with a nice in the Hampton, like the Maggie Center, <coughs> and five. It's a very small project. Uh, it's next to the a very a very large hospital. Uh, there's for uh, cancer patients, and uh, there is a pit, a large pit in the side of the uh, of the hospital, which has kind of enormous shrubbery, and it sits on the edge of that pit. And the idea was to really deal with patients when they leave their various treatments or they see their doctors, they need a kind of space of release. They can sit with their with, with other patients or friends or. Uh, the nurses to kind of really um, not dealing immediately with going back to their homes and family. It's a very kind of uh, uh, cordon and steel structure with this uh, roof light and it's basically one open room next. A Bartlesville, a new product for a museum in Oklahoma, um, in the prairies, um, the tower by Franklin Wright. Um, when I went there, I thought it was something odd about these rooms, but it hit me eventually that it was shrank, shrunk and, sh you, know, you know, Frank shrank the tower. <coughs> <laughs> and um, Americans have big feet, and the steps were, are shrunk enough that it could fit, fit one foot. So if you have a longer foot, you won't be able to step on that staircase that was there in that building. And what was also interesting about it is that every section, every side, the section is different. So some of these rooms are two rooms and some of them are double height spaces, but very, very small uh, site. On th in this tower, there is uh, the Price Tower uh, Art Center, and it exists uh, on the edge, and it's they also use some of the existing suites as part of the center, which is design, a design kind of museum. Uh, and the idea that, with that to build the entire ground with a new museum. Next. So this is like a, like a spiral, the, the building, the spiral around the edge, how to connect to the main, to the ground floor building. <coughs> so uh, the basically, space on two levels. The existing extension of the price tower, which is over here, which was built, uh, I think, I'm not sure at the same time, but the carports. And over here, uh, no phones, please. I'm always having a nightmare that I might be one day giving a lecture and my phone rings. And, and uh, anyway, so the idea that this is the entrance and it lifts up, a uh, space which is carved out as a kind of an like a courtyard. Next. Glazed, so you deal with this kind of movement of the ground. This is a, another civic building and a library, and the intention to kind of really uh, deal with the site as well as a kind of uh, parking and also a uh, park where m maybe eventually they could extend the activity of the museum. And the now there's a hotel here on some of the floors, and some of these activities could actually occur on the adjacent side. Next the entrance, the interior of that uh, space which combines the two, uh, mu the two spaces because it would keep that as an extension of this new museum. Next. Another also recent project which uh, we looked at the, the master plan for a project in, uh, uh, in Taichung in uh, Taiwan for four institutions, well, basically three, a mu very large museum, uh, a city hall, a civic uh, building, and opera house. And then there were two, and the site is more or less like this, and uh, it's all built up, but the idea to kind of really create very large landscapes between these two, these four buildings. These would become the government buildings, and these would be uh, art institutions, next. So this very large, like a large dish becomes a landscape to, c to connect this to that, and then this one to that one. And we made two studies next, of either they are at the extreme ends 
of the uh, the sides, or they are very adjacent to each other, implying that there could be a kind of a different kind of relationship between uh, the political kind of system of uh, there and the and the uh, the art gallery or the opera house, and they could kind of really have cross fertilization between all these different programs, like the pebbles or the rocks in Canton, Quanjao province for the, another opera house. Next. <coughs> Showing some of the interiors, how these two things nest also over each other, like a kind of like pebbles in the sea. Next. Jump out. Another project which also we won recently is for the uh, Montpellier uh, government building for <coughs> um, archiving library and sport. It's like a outside, like as Montpellier, the idea that to do with the idea of uh, branching or branches, uh, the central spine uh, having kind of the main building and different programs spanning off on the edges different studies about how to interpret this idea of occupying the whole site and also dealing with ideas of the landscape is an enormous site. Uh, again, these are early diagrams. Of this, this is kind of all housing projects. Next. So that this uh, uh, how to eventually I think how to combine the topography of this land with this idea of the, the branches and uh, and also kind of blur the boundary between the idea of kind of the government building and these other institutions which are all separate. So you have one guiding kind of line and the others are all different institutions instead of doing them in different buildings but doing them into one single move. Next. The project in, uh, in Vienna which has been going for 10 years Next. That was a product which was done on the Danube Canal on the uh, Otto Wagner Viaduct. It's a housing, uh, it's a housing project. Uh, so, the Rome, which I think I've, I might have shown here before, um, Rome is, uh, is already on site. Next. <coughs> the site is uh, via, via uh, Guadirani. This area is via Flaminia. It is over here. The two, the two. Uh, this is a bar was an existing barracks. And this is a still, I think, police or military uh, installation. The site here is uh, was built as a kind of a car factory in in the early 20th century, and then became a barrack. And there was a moment when the Ministry of, uh, five years ago, the Ministry of Culture convinced the Ministry of Defense to give them that site as an institution for contemporary art. Next. Uh, early studies showing how uh, maybe the organization could be done linear to the main street uh, with courtyards. The discovery of the, the diagonal and how that begins to shift the interior geometry of the whole site. And again, uh, there were many decisions which had to be made, which, uh, which was about whether to leave the barracks, to demolish the barracks, and it became obvious that demolition of the barracks is uh, uh, important, but leaving maybe one here and the one in the entrance. Next. <coughs> the overlay of all these uh, different uh, lines, flows, next. Uh, you running, Patrick? Or is Moisin fidgeting? Next. Uh, so the, f the idea of the, the, the project as a field, uh, the architecture museum, the library at the other end, these are all contemporary art galleries, um, commercial galleries, the existing buildings. Next. <coughs> Next, please. Next. So, no, can we go back here? 
So the, there are two kind of spaces, which is uh, the main streams are the main galleries, and the uh, uh, secondary streams are all the bridges, uh, all the kind of walkways which connect them, uh, all the cores. So these, the, 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 the you end by, by actually defortifying the side or removing the, uh, all the walls on the edge, uh, the recognize that there is a kind of a line which becomes uh, a line which connects them to the uh, existing street. Uh, what began to kind of really, uh, the shift of geometry is all to do with kind of really read the reading of adjacent uh, sides, but also dealing with the, the line flowing on the edge of the side because it's an L-shaped side. Next. Next, please. So this is originally a theater. It now becomes another gallery space. Next. And the walls, which kind of really become the guiding force of this whole project, uh, continuously uh, cross, intersect, and de disconnect to allow for outdoor spaces. Next. So these are the kind of the outdoor, the inside outdoor spaces. The room above, which is the, was the theater now becoming another gallery. Next thing. This kind of uh, endless crossing of the lines of the, the ribs, which become the ribs on the roof, to the lines on the floor. Next. dealing with the, so it's a fundamentally also a very large field. So it moves away from the idea of the object as a building to a very large field, which is made of many components, and these components could become different programs. And the idea that it's a predominantly uh, top-lit um, uh, gallery spaces, uh, with, with obviously kind of shading when need be uh, through this, and the ribs also become structural. So the structure is all on these uh, very large concrete walls. Uh, these are all the ties, and <coughs> the ribs become also a way of uh, rigging very large objects or walls from the ground, so you can have other walls suspended from above or uh, resting on these rails. Next. The existing building, which becomes uh, artist, artist studios, uh, offices, a restaurant, to look at the field, and these are the bridges and the walkways which connect them, also implying a different organizational purposes for the gallery space, so you can have an exhibition which stretches uh, across and they can have very different formations. This one space starts at uh, eight meters above ground and then cascades down to the ground next. So to, um, to allow this kind of really big terraces which you can see from above. As you enter the building, uh, our animations are always very fast. So. <coughs> Can you move on? Uh, looking at some of these interiors uh, with the ribs next. So the, the, the gallery can really can like swing around the edge of the building. In a show last year at, uh, in Rome, uh, in, the, in the space in the front, we tried to test out some of these ideas of these kind of very large ribs. Next. The space between all these different volumes, dealing with ideas of circulation or movement, vertical movement between the crevices because uh, this product is kind of like a archaeology, it's layered in many layers, there are maybe two, three layers, and the space in between becomes uh, circulatory systems. Um, study of the, this, this kind of particular, f the first phase, with the space above, rooflet on the edge for gallery space. And the interior of the installation. And these ribs were 
designed as if they are like books, so one product really follows the entire rib. Uh, Wolfsburg, uh, <coughs> um, this was done also three years ago, uh, so we are nearing more or less towards the end. Uh, not yet, but um, the idea kind of really, uh, this site above was the, um, uh, the Volkswagen factory, the largest manufacturing site in Europe, uh, the station, Wolfsburg, uh, which has some, you know, to two uh, very nice altar buildings and um, uh, Sharon uh, Theater. And the idea that uh, to deal with a one with a science center, which is uh, not separating the factory with the Autostadt from the city. So the idea was when it would be called two things. One was to create a kind of a, a, kind of a mini urbanism underneath the building, and then or what we call the drop voids. And also observing the, this very large structure and the bridge and how it could be inhabited, in this case to inhabit the structure. Next. So these dropped uh, voids, the plateau above. Next. Next time I should really ask uh, Hanif to talk about it. Engineered by Hanif Kar. So these uh, these are the, the kind of the Swiss cheese drop voids, blisters, whatever they may be, uh, of the waffle slab, and these become all the entrances, all the kind of civic activity on the ground, which is uh, restaurant entrances, uh, maybe experimental museum spaces for educational purposes, uh, shops, kiosks, uh, theater, and they are dropped and they become the supporting structure of the waffle slab. And above is a steel roof, and the museum or the center occupies the space in between the steel roof and the waffle slab. To allow you kind of for the museum space of center, the science museum, and kind of really, uh, although with these kind of spaces which are dropping onto the ground, and more or less uninterrupted kind of space, uh, column-free. Uh, uh, and space. And if you notice in all these projects, uh, they kind of really work with the uh, engineers, they've been very critical uh, in terms of not only achieving kind of uh, complexity, but also achieving or cantilevers or whatever, but also we try to liberate most of the space from uh, from finding other solutions to kind of really column grids. In Rome, the structure is in all the walls, and this is structure is in all the uh, cones. The landscape, which brings you, pulls you from the station, into the site and also pulls you through the building and up the ramp to take you to Autostadt. Next. Uh, this is one of the space which drops also down from the, uh, from the waffle slab to form like a kind of crater of a, like a mezzanine of exhibition space. Next. Originally, uh, there was a bridge which went into the building and came out again. Next. From the underside, the different cones, uh, the landscape, the waffle slab, which could be used for lighting. Next. Again, early, early drawing showing the, kind of the, the double cone. Uh, there's some cones which are doubled, which to bring light all the way down up from the ceiling, all the way roof from the, to the ground. <coughs> Below the waffle slab, the different cones with different uh, articulation of the kind of different cuts. They are what I call the mini urbanism under the ground, with which forms a larger scale kind of life underneath. Um, and, and the idea that you are not only liberate the ground, but also you t deal with program, which could make to, uh, to, uh, to kind of create a kind of an event space for the evening and for other times of the day when the museum is closed. Next. The different kind of the kiosk, different ways of entering the maybe the theater. And these very large models were done to really test out how to deal with the cuts in all these large, the, the level of porosity of the ground, so you can move in different uh, ways. The waffle crawling on the edge of this cone. 
these very large kind of like almost hill like landscapes, which means that the entrances are not always on the same level. Next. Uh, studies of this uh, precast uh, window, concrete uh, kind of a wall with the edge and glazed, glazed edge to, uh, to look out. First, that's with the product argument on this is a way. Uh, is that an image? So these are different views of the ground, ground condition. Maybe you can go through them. Some of the interiors. Uh, the double cone, the roof, the, the uh, steel roof. Circulation. On site, some of the cones pouring the uh, water slab or whatever these are called. What are they called? Um, Uh, again, the formwork for the edge or the lip of the uh, the cones, the whole field, uh, the kind of one of these uh, cones of the kind of kiosk, <laughs> and some of these interior views. And the and the dip. Just different views. The mirror, the, the mirrored model, which was in the Venice Biennale. The bathtubs. Can you slow down? It's the same one. Sorry. And these are uh, in scale that look so enormous, like kind of like almost like dams supporting this building. Of course, when I went there, I thought it was too small. Um, that was my shock. It's too small. Um, again, photographs by Hélène Binet and others. So this is, as you come from the station, you are between uh, these kind of onion-like hills, moving to the inside of the open air room, towards the ram which takes you to the Otterstadt, looking in in these different spaces, whether they are restaurants or part of the museum, some of them for uh, experimental spaces, the theaters, and then you you move to the edge. And then you move up the ramp. Seeing again through all the interiors. They're just kind of like really like uh, almost like a nail polish. Uh, bits of color on the interior. And then you look, one can look in, <coughs> and then I would enter the building here, which is, uh, I don't think it's possible anymore, but according to Christmas, you enter through the glass. <laughs> Door is done open. and fly over to get to the staircase. <laughs> and you tumble off the edge eventually, you see? Mm. You are some strange person here. <laughs> and then you enter a beige room. Now, Christos, bless him, is colorblind, like half of my office. This is beige. <laughs> All pink. and fly through the steel roof into heaven. 
<laughs> and this is the last thing I show. This is uh, this is the last one. Yeah. BMW, uh, the BMW Leipzig plant in uh, uh, the in, in, uh, the plant in Leipzig. Uh, this is the last thing, so you can relax in a minute, take a deep breath. This is a very large uh, site. This is the first time really I saw a kind of tabula rasa in the making when I went to the site. With I have shame, I don't have a, a real image of this. Which is like in the fields, there were 50 uh, tractors or whatever flattening uh, this uh, yellow land. Um, this is the, the building, and this is a building which is uh, 400 meters long. And the idea to kind of really create an, an edge, uh, also a landscape for all the cars, car parking, for the training facility and showroom, a landmark on this edge, but basically dealing with a building which has to do with the management and uh, dealing with kind of one, the blue color workers and white color workers. So this is a um, body white uh, paint shop and assembly. And the idea that the cars, which will become inside the building, can move from the body white to storage, then go to paint shop, then go to storage, and then go again to be assembled. And that all the uh, all the workforce uh, enter through the same entrance, and they are in this project. These area, this building is kind of locked in or kind of plugs into these fa large sheds factories, and these are all the locker rooms and changing rooms. And the idea that they are continuous kind of really a movement between them and, and discussions about production of these different cars. Next. Uh, this is the site uh, with very, these very large production spaces, the, the tabula rasa and the, and the fields, and this is the space for our project. Next. Uh, a car park where the cars are permanently painted on the tarmac. Stefan, I think he's here, who did the, uh, the, 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 the parking in uh, Strasbourg, also worked early on this project. Uh, there's also a down with Patrick, like in Rome, and like many of the competitions. Um, so the, um, the car showroom, next. So these are all the, uh, the kind of energy lines moving from the outside into the side. The side on the edge also, there is no fence. The parking becomes a fence. Uh, all the internal infrastructure or circulation, the lines which have to do with movement and also uh, the conveyor belts for all the cars building up, connecting between all the factory buildings, two main moves, which is uh, two intersecting or crossing uh, terracing, the playground as an other space, DRL friends, Patrick's uh, domain, the uh, space frame um, roof. So this is one of the terraces, and the other one, the way the building plugs into the neighboring uh, building, the car park, the blade, which where you enter under, which is also offices, next. So the public also enters there for maybe they have, you know, like uh, exhibitions or uh, showing new products, uh, PR, uh, and they call it um, audit. They can bring the car and audit it. Next. The playground, the space frame, the interior, the existing factories. Well, they're not existing, but they just build them. Next. Section of the blade, which is higher up. Uh, the structure and also these uh, terracing in different places. Next. The terracing. Next. Next, please. <coughs> Another DRL specialty, moving furniture. So 
So kind of forming kind of miniature uh, organization within the main uh, playground uh, with walls also moving to form these kind of clusters uh, of uh, groups within the building or for, di for different projects. Uh, Stefan spent hours writing car parking full with cars, parking busy with no cars. So the idea that the car park looks filled up despite if there's cars or not. And of course the workforce is operates on shift, so some of these, I don't know how many 8,000 car parking spaces would be sometimes occupied or not. I think we just got the permission to do this landscape in a uh, in neon-y neon -y kind of light. So the idea kind of, it, uh, it uh, radiates the whole time. Next. Uh, the blade when you enter the, enter the building. Next. The roofscape. Uh, sp suggestions for the, how you can deal with the adjacent uh, buildings. In terms of kind of maybe uh, texturing or signage. Next. Next. structure <coughs> of these uh, spaces, <coughs> a very large model showing also the roof and the interiors. So these are the terraces, uh, the ramp which takes you up, uh, the quality kind of really of the, of the light uh, inside, or these are the conveyor belts for the cars which move around between the storage and so on. Next. Next. Just go through all the interiors. Patrick. Again, the terracing, space frame, and then you move up to the space above. Next. This is the, anima the old animation here. So these cars move around the whole time while you are working in the area. Some of these cars could be brought in for discussion between the two workforces. So the designers, the uh, management, and th this is an idea from BMW which they wanted to test out how they can combine all these, some examples, can you go back? Uh, samples of how uh, scale models of how the material is, uh, the material of the building. That's it. Thank you very much. Um, and if I'm, we, I'm voiceless. we have time for maybe uh, a few questions, so if anybody's got to leave, maybe you could do so very quickly, please. <coughs> so maybe, um, Maybe we could um, have some questions. Um, I would like to just start, because um, I mean, the sheer um, number of projects that I think I referred to at the beginning, um, in a sense, interesting. It raises a whole series of interesting questions. Uh, one is that now I think you're, you're doing so many different kinds of things and um, beginning to explore so many different issues. Uh, it's, it's quite interesting to know whether there are any specific kinds of projects or specific uh, topics that you uh, uh, would like to uh, 
go on and develop in the coming years or you feel are becoming specifically significant in terms of the office? I think a, a sort of um, additional question which is directly related to this is really how do you manage to uh, keep this level of consistency given the, the scope of the projects? Because it's obviously impossible uh, to keep track of things this, the way that you used to with your own drawings and focusing on one project at a time. So how do you deal with the organizational structure, not of the projects, but of the office in some way, to uh, keep a certain level of, of, uh, of coherence uh, in terms of the well, individual projects? a tremendous projects. difficulty, obviously. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, well, I occasionally sing, uh, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> that is still there. Um, um, I mean, I think that, you know, I think that uh, I, one has not really, I don't think one has achieved every, every ambition. I still think that uh, the civic project or the public project or uh, is still in terms of, I mean, it could be achieved in, uh, it may be achieved through some of these projects, but I think that it, that is still yet to, to happen. Mm -hmm. So there is that agenda. Uh, still there, which is how to deal with very large uh, urban structures which have a degree of uh, openness and ferocity which allows uh, everybody to to move through them, you know, on a larger scale. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, of course, as you well know, the difficulty is always to do with the fact that uh, land ownership doesn't always allow you. Maybe in, maybe there's a, an example to do it in Singapore where this, the whoever owns the land is, it allows you to to test that, um, but I think it could also be tested in, in, in cities like London and places like that. Uh, so I don't think everything has been has been done. I think that um, uh, the idea, the test, and kind of maybe museum spaces is uh, uh, in Rome. We can eventually find whether the test actually works with this idea of curatorial um, flexibility in terms of variety. You know, because uh, the the whole project was about uh, against the white box or complexity, that, that gives you a degree of variety which other, other spaces doesn't give you. So that has to be still kind of really seen curatorially. Um, but as you well know, you know, I don't have much choice in the commissions I get. I well, know, but I think one of the things that's happening in a number of the projects is the, the way you describe the bundling of the different spaces that are horizontal, linear, but at the same time there are certain specific adjacencies that develop as a result of the the bundling and the overlapping of, of these spaces. Are you um, uh, hoping that there are, there are specific effects that these particular spaces produce in terms of what happens inside them? Or yeah, is I the mean, main I focus in terms of the, the actual spatial qualities that you... Yeah, I think they will, I mean, I think that uh, they will produce a kind of special effect which uh, would be, uh, not only gives you a different kind of uh, view, but uh, makes the experience very different. And I think these kind of tests are, are appropriate for public spaces. They're not necessarily always appropriate for everything else. Uh, and I think we'll see how they, they work out. And particularly in, in the Rome project, I think it will, it's, it's in a way it, it's more like most extreme, mm. let's say, at this point. Mm. And what about the question I asked you about the, the office? Seriously, going from oh, one, one project. <laughs> well, well, Patrick can also answer. Patrick, well, you can answer too. No, but I think because you're away, you are, uh, you know, in the office, there's just, s I think, keeping keeping track of how I haven't cloned you're myself yet, but it's always a possibility. No, but I think, you know, I mean, I think somebody asked me in an interview recently, uh, he was a very theatrical interviewer, you know, mm. and he said, is it faith or luck? And I said, it's hard work, mm. you know. I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, that's the, the name of the game. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. I mean, I don't, I mean, you know, I think that, and, and also, uh, you know, I think there is enough, I think that the office changed a lot in the last three years. We were 15 people, and it's, uh, uh, you know, the 15 people did everything, you know. And some of them are here, with Gianna, Oliver, or Shimon, and, you know, well, Shimon is an exemption from the story. <laughs> um, it, the hard work burner doesn't, doesn't really come into there. Uh, uh, so, Sorry, Shmuel. But he uh, eventually worked hard. But, but it was 15 people who did everything. We did the slides, we did, we did the whole thing. So I think that, the, the, let's say three years ago when we shifted from 
15 to 30 in one room, that was really the difficult moment because it was insane. Mm. And I think right now it's different because there are different p teams that have a slight autonomy, independence. Patrick protects them from me. How is that? Well, How does he do that? They don't do drawings, they can't shred them. Uh -huh. So the mothers might get schnitzel, but so there's a kind of protection game here. Um, I'm not sure it produces better work, but, but it's definitely there. Mm. Uh, but I, 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 I really think, I think that the I think it's also no longer it about it being my office alone. I think there are major the people who are there a lot, and, and, and it's becoming it's becoming a different thing. You know, it's a different situation, and I think that is a major major change. I would say. Are there any questions? You're all tired. No, they're not tired. They're just shy. You have to encourage them not to be so shy. You should do it. Give a chorus and, and no shyness. Oh, we were very shy. Slowly, slowly, slowly. When we were, slowly, we were, when we were here in first year, slowly, I was very slowly, shy. Slowly, slowly. <laughs> Never. I was extremely <laughs> shy. Me and you were very shy. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> we just got older or what? Um, Jonathan, no. will you ask a question? Can we get can we get you a microphone? <laughs> there it is. Go ahead. So I'm overwhelmed by the sheer volume of work that you've done there, and the sheer number of projects we haven't seen emerging. But I was quite intrigued to see you doing so many that are involved with major manufacturers, and that's an intriguing thing. You talk about civic space and civic work, but so are these manufacturers, these people doing with like BMW, are they really seriously keen on, you know, working out into what you describe in a civic space, and are they, are they serious about that? Um, I think what is interesting about the BMW is because they really want to test out a new idea of management, of combining all the workforces and therefore all the resources and energies onto the same site in one go. Whether, I mean, that's how it is now. So we'll see whether they stick to it. I mean, th that's part of their program. So it's like you know, private corporations taking over from what public I, I think part of, part of it is because when they're doing this um, delivery center in Munich, it is really ab all about the public involvement and uh, and the other stuff, you know, this whole thing about, oh, it's very commercial, but people coming in, you know, looking at uh, museums for cars, uh, you know, staying in a rather nice hotel on the side, you know, um, this whole thing about marrying the car, you know, uh, is, is engaging the public with the manufacturing. It looks like what you're doing in that, that BMW project you showed right at the end, it does seem there that the architect, you, your gang, you're really involved, tell me if I'm wrong, but really involved in actually changing the perception of the way those companies think of themselves, because how does that work? I mean, are they saying to you, what do they actually say to you? We want to become something different from an old-fashioned manufacturing company. Can well, you obviously that was the ambition of the, of the competition. I mean, I think that was But are they actually asking you? They, are, they do ask you. you know, well, it was a competition. So, so it was obvious in the competition that the, and their, their ambition is to change their one's perception of the idea of manufacturing, but also to combine, not to separate management from the workforce, uh, and that, that, that to produce a better product, you involve different parts of the manufacturing process into one single building. They also seem to be coming like art galleries now, don't they? I mean, that's the Germans. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed. I mean, really, they, they brought the idea of the open, uh, you know, the open uh, workspaces, the terracing. They really can see they're not cellular. They're not selling an you know, abundance of light. Uh, they could be viewed by everybody. There are also, you know, cafeterias and restaurants which could be open to the public. And I think, I think that maybe there was an ambition on their part as well to change their view. But of course, the, I think the way. I think that in many, over many years, trying to actually rewrite the program, and all, all, all the time I was teaching at the A, the whole idea of programming, the importance of program, when it came to competitions, I think that one tried to rewrite that. And I, I I'm, was amazed and surprised that BMW actually bought into that. I mean, they, they, were, they have not, I mean, I could be wrong, but the, but the team has had more problems, maybe more problems about colors than there are about real major decision about spatial organization. I mean, I could be wrong, but that's my, my understanding.
But in a way, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to imagine that companies like BMW are still going to be dealing with what you might consider kind of authentically uh, civic space or, 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 or the, well, the urban because... because semi-civic because it's really it's a, on, a, sure. on a, a private uh, private side. But I think that the fact that they don't want to fence mm. the site completely and they mm. want to deal with the idea of landscape. The other thing is that all the manufacturing are competing with each other with their, that uh, uh, the idea of transparency of that company mm. to mm. the outside world. It's not just them. I mean, sure. Volkswagen, I think, with the other start uh, changed that perception and this whole delivery center in, in, in Munich will change it further, and I think Benz is also uh, doing something. So there's all there, there is a there is a competition, I think, between all the manufacturing. Mm. But in some ways, I think what would be really interesting is, as you said, to explore some of these things for places like London, or you know, actually deal with with situations where the relationship between the architecture and the well, urban I mean, I is think much London more is a, direct. It's a very interesting place because um, because there isn't. I mean, it's, uh, there isn't, uh, it's not through design, but through accident that there yeah. are, there is a degree of porosity in public space. Yeah. It's not a, it's not like a kind of a designed, uh, a theoretical kind of space or, uh, yeah. so it's done by because, you know, people, you know, banks sold their rooms and they become occupied by Starbucks or, or, or uh, you know, vet manger and these have become accessible to a larger public. But it wasn't a strategy that they say, the whole of I don't know where the South Bank is is porous, mm. so there is I mean it's it's ambiguous let's say. Mm. Mm. Any anybody else? Any other? All these nodding heads and no questions. <laughs> right, why don't you ask a question? Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks very much.